Okay, this video is going to teach you about decimals, all operations involving decimals, meaning addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So let's start with addition, subtraction, shall we? The one thing that you need to remember is that you must line up the decimals. So this first problem, I have 1.8 minus 0 0.05. When I set this up, 1.8. I'm going to subtract 0 0.05. The second thing that I have up here is fill in the blank spaces with zeros, meaning this spot right up here, I'll put a 0 in there. Now, I cannot do 0 minus 5, so I borrow from the 8. It becomes a 7. Carry the 1 over. 10 minus 5 is 5. 7 minus 0 is 7. Decimal goes straight down, and 1 minus 0 is 1. So my answer is 1.75. For the next one, I have 2.04 plus 1.8093. Again, line up the decimals. 2.04 plus 1.8093. I'm adding these, and I'll put in the zeros to fill the spaces. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 plus 9 is 9, 4 plus 0 is 0, 8 plus 0 is 0. Well, this is lovely. Decimal straight down, 2 plus 1 is 3. So my answer is 3.8493. Let's move on to multiplication. Okay, for multiplying decimals, this is where you're going to get confused a little bit with your addition subtraction. For multiplication, you do not have to line up the decimals. In fact, when you're doing these type of problems, because you're not going to be filling in the blank zeros either, it, I recommend that you take the number with the most digits and put it on top. It just makes the problem a little bit easier to work with. It makes it, first of all, nicer to look at and then easier to work with, because that can confuse people if you have our students when you have a larger number on the bottom. So. I shouldn't say larger number because technically it could be a smaller number. But the number with more digits on the bottom, that tends to confuse students. So here, I have 2.05. There's three digits in that one. 5.8 is 2. So I'm going to put 2.05 on top. 2.05. Again, I'm not going to line up the decimals. 5.8 goes on the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply and just pretend that the decimals don't exist. So I have 8 times 5 is 40. I'm just going to write 40 here because when I carry the 4 up to the top, 8 times 0, 0, the 4 goes straight down, okay? 8 times 2 then is 16. And then you got to put in a 0, this little placeholder down here, because now we're multiplying the number that's in the second place here. So our answer needs to start in that place. 5 times 5 is 25. And again, I put the 2 straight down there because if I just put it up here, it would end up there anyway. And then 5 times 2 is 10. Add these. I have 0, 9, 8, 1, 1. Then what you want to do is go into the two numbers that were being multiplied and count how many digits are to the right of the decimal place. Here I have 2. Whoa. Here I have 2. Here I have 1. I have a total of 3. So in my answer, the decimal moves three places. And my answer then is 11.89, or 11 and 89 hundredths. I didn't write the zero because it's not necessary. If you want to, go right ahead if that makes you happy. Okay, let's move on to division. For division, the main thing you want to remember is don't divide by a decimal. You can, it's possible to do that, but when you divide by hand like this and not with the calculator, it is, uh, it's, it's, you don't want to do that. So to divide, you want to take the divisor, which is the second number, and change it into a whole number. The way that you're going to do that is by multiplying by a factor of 10 that would make the divisor, this second number here, a whole number. So, point two, I need to move the decimal over one place to the right. When you multiply by 10, the decimal moves one to the right. If you multiply by 100, it moves two times. It goes by the number of zeros. So here, 
One zero moves once, two zeros moves twice, if it was a thousand, it would move three times. I only needed to move once, so I multiplied it by ten. Multiply the first one by ten as well, and its decimal moves over one as well. Now what I have is 12.6 divided by 2. The decimal goes straight up into your answer. Straight up, you! 2 goes into 12 six times. Bring this 6 down. 2 goes into 6 three times. There is no remainder. We are done, and your answer is 6 and 3 tenths. Now, my last problem is when you have decimals and fractions that are mixed because you'll run into this. What you want to do is either convert them all to decimals or all to fractions. Since we're dealing with decimals right now, I'm going to change them all to decimals. Now some of you may say, well you picked the easy ones, Mr. Jones. This is just 2.5 minus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.2. If you see that, great. If you don't remember how to do that, let's just go through it. If I took this first mixed number and made it improper by doing 2 times 2, 2 times 2, plus this 1, I would get 5 over 2. Then what I would do is take the top number, put it in the house, and divide this out. 2 goes into 5 2 times. There's 1 left over. I'm going to add a decimal. I add a 0. 0 goes down. 2 goes into 10 5 times. And... 2 and 1 half is the same thing as 2.5. That's where I got that number from. So 1 fifth, the same thing. You would do 1 divided by 5. Add your decimal right away because 5 doesn't go into 1, but 5 goes into 10. 2 times, there's no remainder, so it's 0.2, exactly what I have written to the side here. So what I would do then is 2.5 minus... 0 0.25, fill in the space. I started with this because order of operations says addition, subtraction, do it as it occurs from left to right. Addition doesn't have to come first, don't make that mistake. Then, cannot do this subtraction, so I borrow. 10 minus 5 is 5, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2. Then I want to add to that my... 0 0.2, fill in the space, 5 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 2 is 4, this is decimal straight down, and 2 plus 0 is 2. So my answer is 2 and 45 hundredths, or 2.45. That is all. Goodbye.